We have an awesome new tool uh, to help you manage virtual classes this year that uh, it's taken us literally to this point to get up and running, um, but I'm really excited to show you some new options. So we have Apple Classroom. We've always had Apple Classroom. We've used it in the past. There's not a whole lot of changes there, except we finally have everything up and working the way it should. But there is a new app uh, to work alongside Apple Classroom um, to help you manage a class both virtually or in person. Uh, Apple Classroom pretty much only works in person, but this will allow you to do things in the virtual environment and in person um, if you choose to. So that app is an app called Manager, um, and you may have used this app already in the past. It is an app that we use to install apps, but it has a portion of it called uh, Mosul Classroom Manager that gives you some really cool behavior things that you can do within a class. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up the Manager app. Now the Manager app has a bunch of tabs across the bottom. Um, you may be familiar with the My Apps page which shows you what apps you have associated to you that you can install on your device or to reinstall apps if you need to. But on the far right, there's an option for Class Manager. Um, now in Class Manager, you're gonna see all of the classes that you have associated to you. Now these are set up automatically in PowerSchool and these come directly to your device. So I have a class here called Mr. Wagner's Class with one student, uh, a lady by the name of Penny the Pirate, who is a member of. Now when I click on this class to open it, this app um, has a lot of power, but as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. So you have to be very careful with this app. Now, first thing I wanna do when this app opens, it's gonna show you a list of all of the students that you have enrolled in this course based on what's in PowerSchool. The first thing I need to do before I start my class or do anything here is I need to mark the students that I do not want affected by what changes I'm gonna make here as absent. Whether they're absent or not, doesn't matter. It doesn't have anything to do with what's happening in PowerSchool or attendance. This is simply a way to control um, student devices. So this app is gonna give us a lot of power to be able to do things to student devices that we've never been able to do before in a classroom and let's say hypothetically you have a student who is here on a Tuesday uh, and other students in that same class are at home on Tuesday working on individual assignments. I don't wanna apply settings to a student who's in person and students at home for the first time um, and lock apps or prevent them from being able to do their schoolwork. So you need to make sure that you want to apply your settings only to the people who are uh, affected. So this could be just the people in your class, like we would do in Apple Classroom, or this could be if I'm teaching a hybrid class where I have people both in person and at home who are still attending the same class at the same time, I could apply this to both groups at the same time if I want to. So, or maybe I am in a quarantine situation and I want to be able to apply this to students even for when I'm at home and students are in the classroom, I could still do some of these things, which is pretty cool. So, um, first step, mark students absent. All I have to do is literally check a box if students are absent. If they are here, I can just leave them unchecked. Now, once that's done, I am ready to start my class. But before I hit start, the second thing that I need to super pay close attention to is the duration of my class. So what I wanna do here is I wanna set the duration of this class to match however many minutes this class is gonna last. And I'll explain why here in a second. Um, I also have a few other things before I start this class to, um, I could mute all of the student apps on their device that simply turns the sound off if I want. I could also hide apps on their device. We'll talk about that in a second or I can choose to give them Bluetooth access for a temporary amount of time. Let's say I'm doing something like a Bluetooth microscope uh, in class today, and I wanna give them Bluetooth permission when normally we may have that locked. That's how you could do that. But once I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and hit start class. Now, what this is gonna do is this is going to start the management aspect of this app. And so I have Penny the Pirate, um, and Penny the Pirate is, has her own iPad. And so Penny the Pirate, as she is in class, in my class, I see her show up right here. It tells me how much battery life she has left. 
uh, it shows me she's got Bluetooth off or on. It shows me she has her camera, and it shows me even what version of her uh, operating system she's running here. Now, I can refresh um, this screen if kids are coming in and out. I could choose to allow them to be able to use their camera or block their cameras if I don't want them to have access. Be aware that will affect what they can do with Zoom if you need to Zoom for that class period. But over here on the left-hand side, there is an option called Steady Apps. And so I have a lot of different tools over here that you can use to, again, help aid your teaching as you're teaching this class uh, live. Again, whether it be at home um, or in person. So I can do uh, anything I'm doing in this app is going to affect everybody that I did not mark absent who is in this class list. So um, if I click on one of these on the left, click on the name, this will give me the settings for it. Whereas if I click on the little checkbox here, this turns it on. So the first one I'm going to show you is one called Study Apps. When I click on Study Apps, this gives me the ability to add a list of apps and restrict all of my student devices in my class to only these apps and nobody else's. So for example, I can add applications to this list um, and I could choose what apps I want to give kids access to. And kids will only have access to these apps and no others. Um, and so I can choose either native apps. These are ones that come with my kids' devices that come pre-installed uh, on there from Apple. Or I can go over here to what's called Apps and Books VPP uh, from Mosul. And this is going to give all the ones that the district has pushed out. Um, so if it's something like Photos or Safari, that comes on my app from Apple. They would be a native apps. An app like Zoom, for example, um, would show up under... Um, the apps and books because this is an app that's pushed out. But once I choose to add these apps, I can check the box and add these apps to it. And once I've done that, I click the check mark. These apps have been um, set up. Now, again, it will not apply these apps until I literally turn them on. I have to click the study apps um, option to do that. Now, when I do that, watch what happens uh, to Penny's iPad. So I click study apps, and if I click back on my class here, you'll notice that Penny's name is still going to show up, and it says that there is a push pending. What that means is it is sending a command from my device to Penny the Pirate, and if you look at her iPad, voila, all of her apps are gone. The only apps she has available to her are her settings app, um, her Zoom app, and her Canvas and her Safari app that I gave her access to. Now, it does give her access to all of these, what they call web clips. These web clips were things like the, uh, the building website or maybe star logins. Those are actually just websites that are saved as shortcuts on my, uh, on my iPad uh, that look like an app, but they're really not an app. Um, those do still show up, but all of the other apps are gone and they will stay gone until one of two things happens. No, either A, the class ends, so whatever time I set at the beginning for that class expires, then all of those apps come back. Or I can physically end that class. And by clicking end class, it will send those apps back. Now, if I wanted to keep managing this class, but I'm finished restricting apps, I can also just turn that off just by simply clicking uh, to turn study apps off. And when I do that on that device, it will again send another command. Depending on internet speed and things like that, it may take a minute or so for that command to make it through. But once it does, all of those apps should appear back on that device the way they were. Now, when I say the way they were, uh, it will put them back on there. But it's important to make students aware that it may not put them in the exact same spot that they were before. If you had apps in a folder, it'll keep them in a folder. But it may not put them back in the exact spot that that folder was. So it may have been on the first screen before and now it's on the second screen. Um, and just FYI, you may, students may have to do a little bit of uh, rearranging um, if you choose to use that feature. Which again, totally don't have to do. So Penny has received all of her apps back. Everything is back where it was. So that's the first thing I can choose. So as I'm teaching, I can restrict apps to prevent them from being able to, uh, to access apps I don't want. Now, there's also the option to do a heads up. Heads up will lock their device with a message. 
Again, this works both in person or at home. So in Apple Classroom, I could lock their devices, but I can only do that to students who are in my room. Um, with Mosul Class Manager, I can actually uh, lock students' devices, whether they're at home or in person. So if I clicked on Heads Up, this is where I can add my message. I can literally just type in a message, whatever I wanted to say, when it shows up as locked. Um, but if I don't lock that device, um, then um, it will not make a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Apply Heads Up. And when I click Apply Heads Up, uh, same as before, it's going to send a command to that device. Um, Again, may take a few seconds for that to happen, and once it does, that device will be locked. They won't be able to do anything. Home button won't work. If they restart it, it'll pull it right back up into that locked position, um, and it'll stay locked until I specifically tell it uh, to unlock. And I could do that either by clicking this Remove Heads Up button or by turning Heads Up Off over here. So another thing that I always got asked all the time in Apple Classroom is, hey, I know I can lock a kid in an app, but I want to be able to lock them on a specific website. And now in Mosul Class Manager, I can do that. So I can do what's called safe test. And the way this works is I can take a website and I could lock them into that website. So I can copy and paste a URL in here. Or if I've done this multiple times at different hours, I can actually view the history and see all of the websites that I've locked in the past, and I can actually copy and paste these if I want. Uh, or I could simply type in the website address. But I have one here for holman.psdr3.org, and I can apply safe test, which is gonna lock students into this specific website. Now, they'll be able to click on things within this website, but they won't be able to do things that take them outside of this website. They also will not get um, a true browser. So they won't get back buttons and forward buttons and bookmark buttons and stuff like that. So it will specifically lock them in. It's designed for tests, something like maybe a Google form or maybe um, a Canvas quiz or something or I wanna lock them in this. Um, this is what this is designed to do. So I can give it a custom duration if I want or I could just have it automatically turn off at the end of the test. So I could set this maybe at five minutes and hit apply save test. Now, from the student side, what's going to happen is it is going to um, launch the manager app. And once it launches that manager app, it's actually going to lock them into uh, whatever website that I have applied to them. Now, if you ever have a student who doesn't get that message or doesn't get that command right away, I can always go back to where it says class over here on the left and see all of the class members and hit update to resend the command to them if I need to be able to do that. So um, if you have maybe one student who didn't get it or maybe I've sent our restricted apps but one student didn't get restricted, I could go ahead and resend that command if I needed to. But in this case, Penny is now locked. I can still scroll up and down. I can still click on uh, links that exist within this uh, page or within this specific website, so I could still go to specific things. Um, but if I get somewhere and there is not a button that does not take me back to a specific spot, then there is no way to get back there. So for example, if I clicked on uh, one of these external links over here, maybe a link for um, these lunch menus, and it takes me out of the Holman website and takes me somewhere else, um, I could tell it to view those menus, that's great, um, but I don't have a way now to get back to where I was before. So when you use it, you have to be kind of careful to make sure that if you're locking them in a site that they don't need to leave that site. They can go to multiple pages, they can click next to go from page one to page two. Whenever I'm done, again, I'm gonna simply go to safe test uh, and I can just turn this off if I want to. So I can disable it or simply turn it off using the button here and this will release it and give them access back. Now, sometimes that access doesn't just automatically take them back to the home page. They may have to hit the home button on their iPad to get out of it every once in a while from time to time. So if you have a kid saying, hey, I'm still locked, I'm still locked, have them try hitting the home button to see if it lets them out. A um, Couple other options. I do have an option to lock apps. This essentially works the same as what you have in uh, Apple. Classroom works pretty much the same way that I can choose an app and I can choose to lock it if I want. 
Um, I do have the ability to add polls where I could have a question and have it send a question. That question then pops up on the student's device and they could submit their responses to that question. Um, and then it'll collect the responses in the entire class and show those results down here. So it works very similar to what, uh, if you remember the old voters where you might have a clicker or active votes or something in a classroom to be able to get a, a feel for where people are at, um, you could do it that way too. Again, it pops up on their device, they choose the response and then they submit their answer. I can also click up here in the corner where it says view history and view past questions. So maybe I wanted to go back and choose one of these other questions. I could see the resp responses. Uh, it'll give me the full on responses, show me which responses each student had. So I can go back and look at this data at any time, which is kind of handy. Again, this is a management app that's designed to manage your classroom. They know that, they work really closely with Apple, and so they actually have a link right in the Mosul Class Manager app for um, Apple Classroom, where it says open the Classroom app. And when I click on it, it simply takes you to Apple Classroom. All I have to do is hit open and it takes me right into Apple Classroom that I can jump in here as well. So um, I can even go back and forth uh, from app to app. So I can do certain things over here in Class Manager and then I can swipe um, to do certain things in Apple um, Classroom if I want to as well. So both of these tools together allow you to do some really powerful things to help manage your class, both again, in person and virtual for the first time, which is pretty cool. Now, when I'm done uh, with my class, it's extremely important that when this class is over, you'll notice I have 33 minutes left. Let's say I'm finishing class early today and I'm gonna give them time to work. Well, if I have not ended this class, then whatever restrictions I have applied are still applied to this class. So in order for the class to officially end, the time either has to run out or I have to hit end class for that class to end. So when I hit end class, now it says class is over, it takes everything back to the way it was and students have all access back to their devices the way it was, so they're ready to go for that next class. And then from my aspect, all I would simply have to do is use my back arrow up here at the top or click on class manager down here at the bottom and then I would be able to go back and then choose the next class and jump into that next class and do the exact same thing. Unlike Apple Classroom, where once a student leaves your uh, proximity, they get kicked out, this will not kick them out unless you release them. So again, you have to be very careful and make sure you end the class uh, whenever you're done. That is Mosul Class Manager. Um, it is an awesome tool. And again, I think it's really, really going to uh, allow you to do some cool things that we couldn't do before.